Well, hello, this is Mr. Anger, and this is Algebra 2. We are going to start working our way through Algebra 2, make some videos to try to help you get through this year. This is definitely going to be tougher than Algebra 1. Uh, geometry is challenging. If you made it through geometry, yay, good for you. And uh, some of the stuff you're going to cover in this pace will actually build on what you had in geometry. And uh, if you went right from Algebra 1 to Algebra 2, there's going to be some new things for you that you'll tackle this year. But then when you get to geometry, it'll seem easier. And if my hair looks a little grayer than in previous videos, I think it is. But I earned it. We had three grandkids born in the last few months. And uh, so proud grandpa. Uh, not embarrassed to say I'm a grandpa now, so I can have gray hair, right? But I've been doing math for almost 40 years as a teacher, and uh, I love algebra, and I hope that you have a good year. Let's dive in. This first concept that I want to talk about is on pages 6 and 7 in the Algebra 2 pace. The first few pages, I'm going I'm to just warn you, the first few pages, there's a lot of... There's a lot of terminology, okay, and some of it may not be familiar to you. So my recommendation would be to get a highlighter or a few highlighters and all the new terms, highlight them. Maybe even get flashcards and write down some of the terms. Some of them sound the same. Like on page three, it talks about sets, uh, which is a group of similar things, like a group of letters, a group of numbers, and... Um, <clears throat> It talks about them either being equal or equivalent. And at first glance, it sounds like we were saying the same thing, okay? But this is where this is where the logic, which is what we're trying to develop in math, okay? There's a lot of very technical definitions, and you have to apply the definition very carefully, okay? So understand the difference as you read it between equivalent and equal, and then you have to compare things and label them that way. All right, but then when we get to page, um, well, let's jump ahead here now to page six. This one's a little different. We're throwing a little bit of algebra in here, and again, some more logic. So there's a question that um, you're turning a statement, <coughs> some information, and into a an algebra type statement. And again, the, the order and all the symbols that are used are very specific. It's important that you get all these little details in there in the right order, but then you have to apply a little bit of thinking logic at the end, all right? And let me explain what we're talking about here. So a set is designated with these little braces, and I don't always draw them very neatly. This one looks kind of sloppy. Um, it's kind of like a symbol like that with a parentheses above and below it, but I try to do it all in one fell swoop. So you might have to practice kind of drawing that. Some students find that challenging. So what this notation here means is these x is our answer. That's what we're solving for, okay? So x is an element of set <clears throat> w. So whatever the answer is for x, it's going to be in set w. And it also has to meet this condition that when you add 3 to the value of x, it should equal 7. Okay? Now, if you look at it and say, well, what am I solving for? What's the answer? That should be easy. <clears throat> you should be able to remember back even to pre-algebra and say, okay, there's only one number that added to 3 will give me 7, and that is 4. Right? So 4 plus 3 equals 7. But the question is, is 4 part of element or an element of set W? So we've got to find set W. Here it is. And it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and then the dot, dot, dot means that it goes infinitely in the positive direction. So even though the number 4 does not appear here, all right, I don't see it, this pattern tells me that, yes, 4 is part of that set. Okay, so it does meet, 4 meets the condition of being part of this set W. 4 also satisfies this, and therefore we can confidently say that the answer is 4. All right, now I'm going to change it up here. I've created a different set, M. This was not in your pace. M for made up, okay, get that, haha. -ha. 
and I just put in five numbers, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Just made that up. They're odd numbers where we have a beginning and an end. It's not an infinite set. And so now I'm going to change this. I'm going to turn it upside down and make it an M, okay? So now I need to find a value for X that is in set M and also satisfies this. Now, same thing, 4 satisfies this equation. All right, we know that. But does 4 satisfy this condition right here? Is 4 in this set? So I look over here, and nope, it is totally missing. It is not in that set, so it does not satisfy that condition. Okay? So here we would have to say then that the answer is an empty set. So that's a 0 with a line drawn through it, empty set. There is no solution that meets both of those conditions. Okay, um, let's look at question number nine on page seven. And they want us to make a statement like that. <clears throat> and they have two things here. They tell us that x plus x equals seven and set d equals one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and they want us to write the statement and then solve it and come up with an answer. So let's walk through, first of all, how we would do this. So we're going to first say x is an element of, but now we're going to say d, okay? So you'll put the set d up here, and we'll replace this with x, x plus x equals 7. Now, when you see, and there's like four of them on your homework here on page 7, when you see two x's, that means they have to have the same value. So I can't say, well, this one's 3 and this one's 4, okay? No, you can't do that. It has to be that this plus itself equals 7. So that has to be, think about it, it has to be 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5, 3 and a half. So we have to look at this domain and say, okay, I know it has to be three and a half to meet this condition is 3.5 in this set here, this domain set. And the answer is no, it's not in there, okay? So in a case like that, even though you could figure out what the answer is for X, that's not what we write. You have to then apply the other condition and then write empty set for your answer, okay? So there are a few of them there at the top of page seven where you need to figure out what the solution set is. That's this. It's either gonna be a number like four or it could be empty set, okay? So there are a few that are empty set. And the bottom of the page is where you're actually writing this whole thing out. And so that's what we were just explaining here. They take, you take the information they give you the equation and the domain, put them together in a statement, and then if you can come up with a solution that satisfies both conditions, then you write that on the in this between those little uh, they're called braces, okay? Set braces. All right, I think I'm gonna stop there and do another video for pages eight and nine.